ஆரம்பிக்க போதும் இது ஆக்சுவலி எல்லாரையும் ஆறு மணி வரையும் இருக்க சொன்னாங்க நரிஷ் மீ அண்ட் செரிஷ் மீ பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் இன்ஜினியரிங் ஃபிரட்டர்னிட்டி டு பீ 
update in digital software technology. So maybe um, an engineer who has done the engineering can be a good person to build the environment, but electrical engineer and communication engineer would be connected. But the entire engineering community is printed and blended because of digital. So everyone is connected today because of this digital era, and we have an opportunity to connect with all such people and get some environment into the speakers. I welcome to the technologies. So we would be very proud And welcome for who is vibrant and who made. Uh, this institution of engineers uh, uh, to the Indian community. So I have seen that the uh, institutions are all coming here uh, for a vibrant because of uh, this institution of engineers in the local center is made in the past. And uh, uh, I welcome uh, uh, secretary sir, so Dr. Sirin sir. So uh, who is the uh, uh, next vibrant person? So who will be connected with the users? So uh, uh, it's because of him the event is so flourishing, and I welcome all the students. So because of you only, we are giving some lecture. So I don't want to worry more. And thank you so much for your time. So I welcome all the fraternity, uh, senior fraternity, for this digital message. Thank you. Thank you, sir, Dr. Balamudan, sir, for gracing us with his presence and delivering such an insightful welcome address. The welcome address, your work says, set the tone for today's discussion on digital transformation, navigating these challenges and opportunities in the post pandemic era. We are truly honored to have your support and wisdom in reaching our level. As we proceed with the exploration of the dynamic landscape of digital transformation, the thoughtful remarks have provided a meaningful context. Once again, thank you, Dr. Jena Barnardan, sir, for the inspiring work for being integral part of this gathering. It is more than honor and privilege to introduce our distinguished speaker for today, the Relay Festival, sir, the senior of Team Cloud Mentors. With a remarkable career spanning over 27 years in IT sector, the recommend sir is the Caesar professional who expertise has scientifically shaped the landscape for technology and business. Both in bachelor degree in computer science and engineering from Dr. Lentia University, complimentary at Yankee from University of Memphis. His industry career featured impactful roles at new organizations such as Vipro Limited, DXC Technologies, and HCR Infosys System Limited. Notably, he served as an enterprise architect at the Toronto, Toronto Airport in Canada, bringing a global perspective to his wealth of experience. As a certified professional cloud architect of Google Cloud, the lecture is deep involvement in digital marketing and cloud computing, as delivering a substantial value to various organizations, driving invocation and efficiency, is coming fun to excellence and leadership in IT center is truly commendable. Without the professionalism, the lecture balances with the passion of cricket and commitment to social responsibilities, reflecting a well rounded and approach to both work and life. It is with great pleasure and anticipation that we welcome our speaker for today, Ratna Wilson. As expert in the field, bring a wealth of knowledge, experience to our discussion on digital transformation. Navigating the challenges and opportunities in the post pandemic era. Dr. Ratna we are honored to have you to share your insights and experience with us. As we embark on exploration of transformative journeys, the organization is in the digital era. We are eagerly anticipating the valuable consultants and guidance you will provide. Without further 
This joint pain is extending a warm welcome to Dr. Dr. Now I call upon Dr. Yelly Ramesha to felicitation to our conduct case. I traveled to Canada for two years on a project, uh, 
uh, there are a number of turnkey projects that I handled. So that was a good exposure. I came back and carried power. Let me generate my knowledge. That's how it works. And I started, there was a good opportunity to start Google. So I applied for partnership with Google. After uh, struggle of around six months, I got an uh, authorization to send Google services. So I got certified. I am a certified Google Cloud professional. And uh, alongside, I also developed some of uh, my hobbies on digital marketing. So my passion towards don't work for on social media and do some research. I'm not a social media company, by the way. If you check my Social media profile, you, want, you won't see many of the uh, updates, but I'm very interested in the social media. Okay. Um, you want to make a video, okay. um, want to believe, I, when I created my first profile, I exhausted it for more than 5,000 friends in Facebook. That was the early stage when Facebook was launched. Then my profile got kicked out because I started making too many friends around, right? At that time, Facebook didn't have those many filters as they have today. Today, they'll kick you out when you have to see the friend. Okay? They know whether you are acting intentionally or it is an act of a bot. Okay? But not on those days. So, so as a result of this research, I've been doing some uh, experiments on digital marketing also. Okay? Um, on the paid campaigns. Uh, not only social media, there are other part of our uh, website design with uh, uh, those associated areas. Um, result of that, I started using the palette. Okay, we have lots to develop insights. And then the team size grown. I've acquired a few contracts. All the contracts went well. Then I realized that we use potential over here. So now both the business units are aligned. Okay. I also have a uh, academy started during the time of COVID. I started teaching a uh, different um, that initiative is still on. Okay. So that's in a natural about me. Right, let's talk about digital transformation one, how it looked before COVID. Okay, today the topic is post COVID, but we need to not understand how the transformation happened before COVID. Okay, we all know, we all know, um, post 2000 smartphone wave started, everyone started using today. The population you could see, um, at least 30 percent and more are holding a smartphone. Okay, um, and then cloud computing started early 2010 or before. It picked up and then um, enterprises started moving to cloud slowly. Okay. IoT was a subject which started in around 2011 2012 onwards and it's gaining momentum very, very fast now. For example, um, AI is a very new subject. Most of you might be well familiar with that. So, we'll talk about it. Um, not going to talk about digital twin and all. Um, and then augmented reality is another area which is gaining momentum. And we will talk about few more things which are becoming popular post pandemic. Okay. Next. Okay. Before we get into that, as students, you must know, you must uh, realize the importance of digital literacy. Not only students, any anyone, like if you happen to be uh, uh, a layman, for example, one may claim that I don't have knowledge about internet. Why would I need to know about internet? Or why would I need to be in the social media? So many questions are raised. Okay. Well, we can always say that you don't need to be part of it. But if you don't put any effort, okay, 
to be part of the wave. You will not be able to vaccine. People who are affiliated as of today, they will take the vaccines. That's the way the current post pandemic is taking people around. I always uh, follow this principle of five A's. Number one is access. You should not have to go and read what. Okay, that's about access, adaptability. Okay. Um, this is a bit difficult in my case because if if you have to adapt to something new, then there is going to be not there, there is definitely not a good news. You'll have to spend a few hours on learning. You'll have to sit down patiently, read something. You should develop the habit of uh, extracting information from different sources. But this is a must. Awareness. Okay, not, you cannot become a must in all technologies, right? Is it possible? No, definitely not. But it is okay to know like what's happening around. At least what is what you should know. Okay. Like uh, today, if you ask cyber threats, at least you should know like how to respond to OTP when something is triggered, how to ignore OTP. At least to that much of difference you should have. Analysis. This is a very important point, right? Today you make a decision in your life, maybe you will come across this many situation where you have to make an important decision. If you don't make a data point at that time, you are probably making a wrong decision. So even though that decision happened to be a right decision all the time, your uh, your people around you may say that you are this is this is the thumb rule that you should make this decision. For example, after you pass out joining an enterprise, okay, uh, you go and join some big organization, probably you will start your career as a junior, they will put you on training, okay. You will be in a training position and then after three years you will get a slightly bigger position, okay. A small guy will not do this. Not, I'm not saying that all corporations does this, but if you look at profiles who are Accelerated the growth rapidly. Probably they would have gone and joined a small enterprise, okay, where where there is more opportunity to learn. So you need to analyze, okay. Probably before making a decision, look at the data points, bring in more data points, and make decision supported by data, not decision supported by emotions or someone in which you would get to do this, do that. No, the Transformation doesn't care about all these things. Okay. Probably if you want to study those things, my work. Okay. Applications. You all, one, two, three, four years, you are done. Okay. Many people pay in this area, application, effectively using these two tools, right? They learn about some tools, but they don't know how to use it. What is the part of learning something and you are not applying it? Right? So you should know while you are learning. You should have a plan when to apply, where to apply, how to apply. That's about it. Okay. When there's a problem, use the right thing to solve it. Okay. So these are generic guidelines before you get into learn or before you try to solve a problem. Okay. Let's say still someone doesn't want to part, be part of this way, not to have alignment with these principles. What will happen? As I said, like a tech savvy people will take the front seat. You may be kept behind as there is a need to become tech savvy to accompany the journey. You might lose the business opportunity if you are a business owner. The competitor will take away the opportunity. Okay. If your customer is more educated than what you are, probably you are gone. Even if you become little literate little, little later. There are high chances nobody is going to trust you. Impact on career goals is very important for all of you, right? You will be excited when you join the company, but if you don't learn and grow, you will get to know within a year time. Okay. Job security, what people are losing job now. If they are not, if they are not learning on the go, leave a whole training, forget about protection. Okay. You are supposed to start your learning journey from the day when you join any organization. Okay, you should have your own hobby, and most likely the hobby should be aligned with your work expectations. Okay, digital literacy gap, just like generation gap, right? This is a new terminology which is becoming uh, very popular. Okay, that means people 
study from the same university, okay, they will have this digital literacy gap. They would have passed out from the same department, computer science or electronics, anything. Oh, okay. But a person who is well versed with, with, with the digital transformation, what's happening around it, they are probably, okay, they, will, they will be able to get you. How much is your digital literacy gap? And this, most likely, this literacy gap will be indexed and measured probably when you attend any interviews in the house. Okay. Today, uh, if you go to an interview, they are not looking at your profile, rather they are looking at your LinkedIn profile and they are looking at how many recommendations you have, okay? How many um, achievements you have, how many certifications you have, because that speaks not how many experience you are carrying, it doesn't matter. Okay. Right. Okay, coming to today's topics. Um, so we are, there are a number of topics available to discuss, but I picked up these five which are top trending. Um, post pandemic, cloud computing has been there, but it's it's going crazy. Okay, AI, everyone know this, so we'll talk about it. IoT, many of you might not be aware of this, but I will talk about more about this. Um, online education and social media. While we understand multiple transformations in IT from the beginning of 2000-2001, these five topics are gaining momentum rapidly after the COVID data. Okay. Uh, why? There were organizations, I have seen personally, like uh, when I was talking to a few corporates, I have been pushing go to cloud, go to cloud. Okay. They were not using why why have to go to cloud? If I go to cloud, I'll have to save more money month month after month. I'm okay with what I have. But the moment in the cloud, COVID kicked in, right? So they have seen all completely different your laws. There are employees, but they're not coming to office. And uh, I'm like leads. How to manage remote working known as any close site security attacks. Everything in one year, 2021. 2019 onwards, I think, 2020 onwards. So, let's talk about the most influencing thing um, that, that I have uh, witnessed. We know there are hundreds, uh, thousands of case studies around us. Uh, many companies have uh, gone to cloud. Okay. I'm going to take a couple of Few uh, case studies here. Uh, I have seen uh, large enterprises, they put a seven year roadmap. Typically, any IT organization, they put a seven year roadmap, right? Where they need to plan their budget, reserve the budget, talk to the board of directors, reserve the arrange their roadmap, and then move accordingly. Okay. They set the goals for year after year. Uh, during the COVID, all these roadmaps they put a cross on because they know. We are into something else right now, right now. So enterprises started changing their strategies. I mean, um, there was a there was a certain spike of uh, jobs changing. Now it's getting stabilized. That's what we So I'm going to take a case study of uh, a company, pharmaceutical company. As I was going through a number of case studies. And uh, this uh, is of good interest to me because uh, with these case studies, I want a few weeks. Okay. Let's talk about what is special with AstraZeneca. Okay. How many of you have heard the name Covishield vaccine? Everyone, right? Because if Covishield vaccine and Covaxin vaccine was not there today, we don't know what would have happened. Yes. Okay. Availability of this vaccine online is only so okay. But what happened at the back end? Or the diabetes alone? Uh, that is, yes, yes. So there were, there were people in front of the okay. They visited at the right time and, and executed things at the right time, which accelerated decisions and things. Let me explain what happened. Okay. When, they, when they, this, this was 
couple of years before 2019, when the 2020s when the COVID began. So the early discussion started in the 2016 itself. Um, CIO of the company AstraZeneca started uh, putting a plan of going to cloud. And then they realized it was not an easy journey because pharmaceutical companies they are they have stringent complex regulations thing that they have to meet. They cannot touch the data that easily. Okay, that was number one challenge. And then the complexity involved in involved in moving data to cloud. Then data security, all these things came in fine. So he didn't pick uh, the complex part. The smart move is low hanging tools. He focused on which are the easy areas to attack. So he picked up email, started. Mm -hmm. That time, Office 365 was ready to okay. So they started migrating the mailboxes quickly to Office 365. Mm -hmm. Likewise, service management, IDSM. So they move to service room. Okay. Box is document management solution. Salesforce, CRM. Okay. With these four um, portfolios, they managed to even consolidate some of uh, small small applications together. So they have uh, they have merged these these four, they ready to this four. So this happened before COVID. So they were ready for the they did not know this is coming up. No one knew that, right? Okay. Then, okay. after this, they didn't finish touching their core applications. Okay. Okay. Um, those applications are a bit complex because you can't simply just uh, move it to the cloud. Okay. There are dependencies disqualified. Okay. The so, they picked up technology okay. that they were familiar with VMware. How many of you are familiar with this VMware virtualization technology? Good. KWS, okay, is a cloud. They picked up first. They also have workload picked up on Google Cloud. So with this combination, they started moving one by one to the cloud without uh, major disruption. You know the outcome of it is um, the scientists were studying before if they need a server to simulate something, it will take weeks. With this platform, self provision, they don't have to raise. Request uh, by calling IT support or something. Just click on the button to have a signal distribution. It will be ready in the payment system. Okay. Technology defense is very upgrading. It goes down. We need to gain my operating system. We need to take it off database version. They don't need to discuss. Those are the problems I have. Something like a software system. This is the you still retain your operating system, make some adjustments, okay, but it will still work. Scalability, right? Earlier they had a problem if they have scale, they need to have a plan. On cloud, they can quickly scale. Security and compliance. So security and compliance was a problem in cloud, but they are able to manage them. Okay. So again, what it what is the reflection on the business? Foster and around. We can wise decision business decision your own names and we create in fact the delivery and around time. Okay. This, this is not the whole story, the vaccine was released, but this contributed to a great extent. Okay, AstraZeneca. Like AstraZeneca, oh, there, are other, uh, there are hundreds of them, but I have read case study of these uh, 45. Uh, Walmart, PayPal. All these companies have adopted the law. I personally started a project with uh, um, a company in the US. I don't know how to name them due to uh, NDA restriction. So they joined the work, um, preparing the drawing for the, the integrated part of the right? so chips and all of them. So they run a lot of simulation for weeks for to come up with one uh, output. The servers have to run. For weeks, okay. So they moved to cloud and they edited a lot. And the, the good news is when they have to move to cloud, they don't need to stick to the geography. Except a few countries they restrict moving to cloud to be restricted within that time within the country, you know, lost mainly they focus on that. But they took the advantage of moving to a country where 
hosting software okay. uh, This is the story of uh, AstraZeneca. I'm going to talk about a few local stories. I'm um, sorry, they are uh, really doing well after I started my business. Um, and uh, this was the big time when I started. I was, I was looking for the most of this business. More problems in 2019, 2020. Wow, when I, when I started, it started to this place. COVID came, what to do now? It started in academy. Through academy, some, some leads in some way. Okay. This business was there, but it was not accelerating. Because uh, because of COVID, everyone was confused. Okay. Let me talk about uh, uh, a case study here. A company, I don't know, name the company in Mylapur, Chennai. They had about uh, 50 employees. Okay. They were doing uh, the backend work of a US client. It's a free press company. They create PDFs for books and all. So it's, uh, Kind of a big rest facility. So, when the lockdown was announced, so they all scattered to home. Okay. They tried to attach documents through emails and exchange information. That's how they managed. They had a server in their office, and uh, that server post all the information. When they got to home, there were problems, broadband is not enough, people were not reporting on that. So, they are found all the time. One fine night, I got a call. They were not my customers, but through my friend, I know this company is there's a good potential. When I tried to reach out to them for uh, a transformation opportunity, they said, Okay, let's wait. Suddenly, at midnight, I got a call from the LD of the company. Okay, I asked him, uh, What happened? Okay, I need some help here. What happened? Our server was crashed. Uh, yeah. They ran some attack. It was hit by ransom for attack. Somebody is asking for billion dollars. Not a million dollars, I think, a couple of thousand dollars. We gave this to you. Don't give it to me. If you give your data, is not going to come. Ransom for attacks are proven to be like it's an art. Attack happened, that's all. We might get any backup is there, good news, no backup, you restart your company. So, this is my experience. So, that happened. I knew that this company is in trouble. Okay. Then I said, you have backups. I need to check with my ID address. That is your ID address. Somewhere near remote village. And they said, no way. Okay. But through, through some information, I got to know people will work from remote place and they carry some laptop. They have some bits and pieces of data in remote areas. Okay. But all the data has to come into a central place so that they can then operate from the link. So, how to solve this? I said it's fine. There is no point of restarting your server or server is not all running. The, the, the attacker has written a message in the notepad file, contact me and then send this money, that's all. And you put a bit of on the drive. Yes, after the entire drive. So no point of going back to the drive. I said, look at your alternative source of message. Where are we having this? I'm going to Okay. They also had this COVID thing, but it's a problem with the attacks at all. 
this will happen to increment my because their end customers are uh, like a publisher, big publishers like Pearson Education, Painting Publishing. Okay. So they their compliance requirement says my outsourced vendor should have a disaster recovery implemented. So most of our companies over here in Chennai, Bangalore, they don't care. Right? I have backup, that's all. Why would I have to worry about disaster recovery? We are not going to hit with a earthquake or flood all of a sudden. Okay. But when it hits, COVID was like a disaster, right? So with COVID, companies got woken up. They started asking for disaster recovery solution. Well, we were waiting, right? We were hunting for disaster recovery solution everywhere. And when, when the time comes in, they start selling. So we have uh, implemented a disaster recovery solution for this particular company. Uh, size of data is around 50 terabytes. And 50 terabyte was uploaded within 50 days of time. And, and from the 16th day onwards, they had a backup and recovery system from the cloud. That means another COVID hit, they don't have a problem. They have a remote working model. Everyone can come to the in or directly to internet and download the file. Full security in Okay. A similar um, case study from a uh, financial uh, backend company, around 150 employees located at Bellwood. So they want they don't want a disaster story, they want to only a backup on the theory. Well, but a uh, cost effective uh, solution that was implemented. So in cloud, you have the flexibility. You want to pick a storage which is highly available, high performance. Yes, you have it. Well, you don't have the money, you want a less expensive storage, but you don't need the data often. You have a storage uh, tailored made for that, this data. Okay. So you have um, options available in cloud. That flexibility. And at any point of time, if you want to shift your data from less expensive storage to a high expensive performance storage, it is possible. Okay. Not everything is a good news in cloud. Why? There are challenges too. Right? What are the big challenges? Okay. All of a sudden, when you everyone is going to cloud, who will manage in the cloud? Is it Google, AWS? Yes, they manage only the management part. Will manage the actual backend programming, provisioning. So we need more resources, right? Not only we need, I mean, the whole world was looking for skilled resources. So people started uh, attending courses, getting certified in cloud. So there was a gap for there. People migrated, uh, see customers migrated to cloud. Then because of this gap, they have to pull, pull the plug out because. They have to bring, they have to switch off their old server again, uh, onboard a certified resource who can manage the cloud again, okay, restart that. So these mistakes happen. Um, again, one more problem people want to cloud and they felt like uh, now I am logged into a particular company, Amazon, AWS. Now, after going to AWS, you have to follow what AWS says. They say that my so one cost, cost of one server is going to cost you 8,000 rupees a month. Now I'm going to increase 9,000 rupees a month. What will you do? You have no choice. Okay. Then people started thinking about multi-cloud. This multi-cloud concept kicked in 2021 onwards. Okay. Uh, all the OEMs started bringing in dashboards, which are compatible with other cloud service providers. Okay. You take uh, uh, Google, they have uh, they have a separate dashboard for it. AWS have it. VMware, they have their own cloud. They support all other public cloud service providers through their dashboard. So that again, multi-cloud is a skill. Um, my advice if you are learning about cloud, you start the journey about multi-cloud. Okay. Because if you have to know about two, three clouds, you will be obviously um, covering all the clouds of it. Because the market of the right? A virtual machine running in Google and a virtual machine running in uh, Azure. Fundamentally, Similar concept, but you will have to get familiar on how to provision a uh, few set of tools.
So, if you are uh, attached to any of these topics, you are getting this guarantee. Okay. Because the more the users are increasing, especially on the financial sector, let's talk about benefits in the cloud. Maybe this. Is these things are covered in uh, most of the academies, but still I want to talk about this. So, you need to cloud. Again, uh, this, is a pure, like, uh, you, this, this is the most preferred one because it's a pure, it's a pure cloud, right? You, the cloud services are, are hosted fully managed. You don't need to have uh, more friendly people in this area. Software as a service is something like, take example, Gmail is a software as a service, right? If Gmail goes down, do you go to your uh, Local support engineer to rectify it, or you just need a browser internet connection. That's all. Okay. Um, so, here you have to take into account when you move your service to a software as a service. Um, let's take an example again okay, for email. Currently, you might be running a local email server and you want to move to Office 365. Okay. So, a number of things need to be checked before that. Compatibility, uh, how you take your uh, uh, local PST files or whatever it is, and then upload that. Uh, so you, you are actually getting a modernization of software. Your application might be a monolithic application with a tightly coupled. So when you go to cloud, it's all easy, it's easy to transform. So that's the modernization that you have to uh, think through. Um, if it is already a modernized application, maybe your development team is already developing on containers and they are using, they are using uh, uh, Kubernetes like, like platform, then the job is easy. Uh, consolidation again. I have seen in my experience, you need to give it to first application. So, another application, you have an application running under one middleware or in a website, you, know, you install one. Tomcat, assembly, anything like that, Apache, Tomcat. You already have Apache. Okay, the application can run on. And another application, another Tomcat, another operating system, another server is running. Why? No need, right? Consolidate into a single server unless you have any disqualified in there. Okay. So that is another area you need to look at. And then whether you are going for a migration, as is migration, or, or a green field. Suppose mostly it is going to be green field, right? So an ASIS migration is only applicable to trans and qualified. Right? Uh, OEM they release certain tools which can directly migrate. Okay. Uh, and, and you have to certainly do performance testing because if your calculations are wrong and you 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 went and bought some SaaS service which doesn't offer the performance. You are running a data analytics platform which is high CPU intensive and that one, which will run only on premise, but you are hosted in somewhere on the cloud. On the cloud is still better. You are hosted in a normal server, thinking that it's also a server that's somewhere. The CPUs will be so, so this is the journey that you have to take care. If it is infrastructure of the service, many of you may have a question: how do I choose between SaaS and IAS? Okay. This is more complex, more formal period really, okay? But once it is implemented, the journey is so normal. Infrastructure as a service related to SaaS, less work, because you are not touching the underlying technology area. 
you are retaining most of the technology. So, say, now, which are basically to migrate over to the nowadays, these technologies they talk to each other and they take they walk in consideration. If you have a lot of the they walk straight away from I think some best practices you can implement. Like any other framework you want to implement, that's another area you can think that. You should put a security framework in place, otherwise, you are going to get into trouble. Going to going to going to going to Platform as a service is more of a tailor made solution. Like uh, if you have a development team, you are setting up a service which is tailor made for that. Only you have to uh, Worry about a few things, change management, change management. The rest of the things are managed in the cloud itself. So, uh, many organizations they go for hybrid multi cloud. See, there are two things that we are talking about. One is multi cloud, and another one is hybrid. Hybrid means mixing a public cloud and private cloud together. Okay. So, you have a locally optimized data center and public cloud mixing together is hybrid. You should have a cloud dashboard enabled. You should take it up, take fast over there. Well, top 10 benefits of cloud, you can you don't have to pay capital in a huge capital. Um, pay as you go, zero capital expenditure, and the operating expenditure will be there. You can scale anytime, you can scale up, pay down, both options are available. And actually, it's easy. Self service, and reduce the maintenance. Of course, this. If you if you standard for the one because it's a standard for you, standard standard for the local city. Innovation, disruption, and of course, and standard is for the performance and environmental impact. You know, data center and center is burning energy locally. It's a wonderful update. There are drawbacks, challenges. Uh, without internet, no problem. You go to some village in Tukuburi somewhere near around and what is the cloud? What will you do after you go to the cloud? But things are changing. Every village will have it in their hands. And limited control. I want to change my operating system after I go to the cloud. Yes and no both. Okay. You have to ask the group for compatibility. It's not like what you had in the office. And better not things. Okay. Cost over and if you don't know how much of cost you are entering, if you don't put the right tools to analyze them and generate reports, probably you are going to be more in cloud. That doesn't mean that the cloud service provider they take money. They, they only provide the platform to you. You will have to put a certified person and make sure what workload you are spending will incur what cost. To keep an eye on how much cost is going to be. You can set uh, a few rules, the cost can, should not exceed on a monthly basis. So there are options that you can explore. Okay, let's switch the next year. AI, we're not going to talk much about AI. There's not much of the technical that I can talk about. I want to talk about uh, how AI is making a difference when it is Coming to business. Okay. Digital okay. 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 literature is essential as a leader of the Harvard to have individual kind of business understand how the AI quickly adapt to the technical advancements because it's rapidly growing. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's say for individuals, what are the four key things that AI can do? Language translations. Okay. And then education assistance. Well, my son doesn't do homework alone. He opens up something that he only makes sure that whatever he does by that education is That's good and bad. Virtual assistance. You want to have a virtual assistant computer and that assistant can do on this one. You have to do a little bit of training in the beginning and then it's 
start of the year pattern you are having, your choices, okay. Idea generation, you are stuck up with the decision making problem. Okay. You have some data, but you don't know how to analyze the data and make a decision. You give it to AI. So whatever you do in your meetings with uh, some 10 to 15 people, after a few days you come back with a decision. You feed the data to give you what decisions you are making is right now. Okay. That's for individual. What for business? Okay. You have a programming team, let's say you have some programmers and they sit and do coding. So your uh, basically the, the fundamental of coding is reuse the codes, right? Now with AI, it has even got the next level. Okay. Reuse the codes again. Why you have tried to score? This thousand lines of code is not needed. I can do the same job in a few lines. You just give your uh, code and it will suggest you a better code. And you can uh, just think there are regulated codes available. You just have to let the AI know that I want to write a program. And my objective is this. My platform is called platform of this. It will give you the code in just in the next second. Okay. But that alone cannot solve all the coding uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. Content generation and proof reading. If you want to talk about specific, uh, you are not well friendly with that area. So you can explore, uh, use the AI to generate. And you have an idea of your written essay, you want someone to do the proof reading. Mm -hmm. AI can do it. Customer survey. Most of you may already be experiencing that. Suppose you buy some. Um, some garment from a chocolate shop or something, then by the time you reach one, something is in the WhatsApp, you give you some experience. Or how is your shopping experience? Please say, Do you think that's done by you? No, uh, it's done by, done by a bot. Then it knows what is your size. By the time you reach home, it knows all your history, okay, your bio data. It will probably suggest you what you should buy for the next uh, upcoming festival, okay. Uh, so that is the kind of uh, customer service mainly, I would say, for data analysis. Uh, we talk about it. You, then the journey of AI begins. You try to bring in as much as historical information to the intelligence so that it can do a right like, job better. Well, just a snapshot of how it is affecting our daily life. Uh, some of these may be surprising to you. AI is already built into your smartphones. Now, my smartphone is an Android. I have Google Assistant in it. Alexa. If you have Alexa at home, you have artificial. Apple user Siri. You are, if you are using Google Maps, if you are driving back your phone, that means there is an AI engine at the back and running somewhere, which is collecting data from your uh, mobile devices. How, it is, how, we, how your um, map? Knows that this area is there is a traffic on this zone and it is rerouting your path. That decision is not done by any application alone. Application is feeding that back, data back to artificial intelligence and the AI is giving decisions. Um, online shopping and e commerce, yes. Um, you, you, you buy a product and immediately there are recommendations coming out because there is a data set which is already um, proven that. People who buy this also buy this, right? You are, you are watching a short, YouTube shorts. The moment you complete your short, as again the next uh, what you are actually thinking is coming in. How is it possible? That's true. Yeah. Okay. Banking, fraud detection is possible. Instant and instant fraud detection is possible. Uh, personal finance that plays an auto trading model. Forex, nowadays, uh, the foreign exchange market. A lot of people use auto trading models. Okay. Healthcare and fitness. I personally, I'm, I'm, I'm benefited out of this. I joined one program which uh, takes care of health. So it keeps suggesting me what to eat, what not to eat. All I have to do is before I touch my main weight, I have to take a snapshot, okay, put it on the tap, and that AI will analyze whether it is your party, right, how much proportion, this much analysis it does. Okay. It takes and then put a table how much of carbohydrate, food, protein, and it gives me that you have eaten so much of uh, carbohydrate. Unfortunately, we have daily carbohydrates are going on. Okay. So, so it, it also sees 
And you, so they are, they, nowadays, uh, gadgets have come. Okay? They gave me some uh, something to put on to monitor the glucose level. And it constantly monitors the glucose level over the 24 hour cycle. And I think I was surprised to see the pattern. Personally, you know, Rava Kesey. Okay? Someone told me and said that you stop eating Rava Kesey because of shooting up your blood sugar. And they suggested a very um, eggs. I thought someone, some doctor told me, how are you eating eggs? High fat, cholesterol content. But artificial intelligence has told me from, from observing the data, when I eat sugar level spice, right? What I eat, what is what spice? And repeatedly, uh, someone has been monitoring this at the back end and they gave recommendations. And they specifically told me stop eating and then uh, they challenged me if your sugar level doesn't drop, they challenged me. So it's that's the drastic improvement of the problem. So I'm not marketing any company here, but this is my personal experience I have seen. My HP A1C level has dropped two points just within a month back. I've been trying that. I'm not a serious patient of diabetes or pre diabetes itself, but this has given me now. Then I started believing that it's really working. Okay. Um, entertainment, Netflix, Spotify, they, they have uh, personalized uh, uh, calculations of what to see, what not to see, what you want. Accordingly, they make decisions. Social media, yes. Um, personalized feeds, right? So you know, they know your preference accordingly, they show you what you want to do. Like. Uh, harmful content they remove at the source itself. Suppose here uh, you want to operate it on those are the top days on the top two or three days. Then uh, Instagram will sit and notice that you are, you are using it on the bus. Now, immediately after this, it will not even allow on all the cases. It will suggest that this is this background music is operating. Okay. That's the level of uh, advancement service. Language transition, we talked about it. Email with us. Uh, yeah, Google has implemented that is, you know, don't know, like a Gmail or any other option will automatically use by Email editing. Okay, now you can edit images. Yeah, you can edit images. Yeah, you can start editing videos. But they are on mostly in beta stages. And uh, customer service bots are there. What are the future advancements in AI? I'm not going to spend more time. We need to talk about more other interesting topics. Healthcare, more accurate uh, data points will come. Automotive industry, yes, uh, autonomous vehicles we are seeing in other countries. So hopefully, it will come in India also. So, robotics, yes, um, smart factories are coming up. Banking fraud detection, e retail, e commerce, we are seeing it. Uh, but what is what is advancement in future is probably like virtual fitting rooms will come in. Now, you you buy a product in Amazon. How many of you have seen like uh, it has an option to see whether how which it will fit in uh, to your location. That is Will become 30 billion by 2025. Okay. Uh, three we have Ron and Corporation who, who are going towards this line Digital India and Smart Cities are accelerating the journey. So, if I want to take this use case, uh, maybe you are thinking when I talk about a smart city and maybe urban within the city topic, but it's like the majority of the number is going to be from rural. Okay, villages. Precision farming is a, is a top subject in other countries. So, so uh, I've seen a few places in India also like they are adapting to this. So, they do a number of things through sensors. 
MOTs or internet. And guess what would happen? Um, if you are using Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, anything. Okay, have you? Okay, so most likely the next one here time, no, what you have one. Either you have to buy or any anyone will give you this. Okay. So these helps your life easy. I mean, at my home. All the equipments they have starting from lights, fans, adhesives, everything they are smart. Okay, they are connected to my Wi Fi network. And soon I enter the home, they know that I am Okay, because my door bell is equal to the camera. The moment I press the bell, it will take a snapshot of my and it will record and then me. Okay, the record tells other devices what next to be done. The teasers will be switched on the evening. Uh, and it is programmed to get and start the So this makes life easy. Benefit not only the convenience, electricity is saving. Okay. So when not a new electricity shop, I'm using Philips with uh, a brand name called this smart lights. They they are equipped with motion detection. That means when you are not moving around, it will automatically switch off. Okay. In convenience, you just uh, give the command to switch off, switch on. You can sit in your living room and switch off the fan to uh, the bedroom. Okay. You can even, I don't know, I can switch off my fan from my mobile app. Okay. Um, smart functions, I say like security with motion detection, video load bill, security guard function. When you are going out of station, you can just put the guard on. That means any intrusion will be detected and will be. It will trigger on your mobile device. So these are handy features which are uh, becoming more popular. Only when you use, you will understand the potential we have. Okay. So it's not a costly solution, right? Nowadays, you can start your journey with uh, an investment of 5,000 rupees. You buy any of these devices, your journey will be. That's how I started four, four years before. I got my first Alexa before four years. Okay. I will enable smart services. Um, what are the future trends? Augmented reality, robotic assistance. Here, yeah, I think I'm not going to talk about this much. We know that smart cities in India are coming up. It's a big wave here. Uh, I'm carrying too many things around from uh, Andhra Pradesh. It's happening in the It's accelerating. One of my uh, friends is actually engaged in that project. Uh, so it's making a, a huge impact on our life. How? The technology integration. Now, the data from smart cities will be fed to make wiser decisions. That means waste management becomes easy. Okay. Um, traffic management, e-governance, all these things will be integrated. You will not see the benefit now, but a couple of years later, you will once uh, these things are extreme and you will start to experience that. When India will become places like Singapore, this is the one. Online education, yes. Here we have a live example. Dr. Indian University. They have seen a they have seen a very big success, right? Posting. When they started the online education during the COVID time, picked up very well. Now it is it is well recognized. Uh, online center for online program is very well recognized, I have seen. Uh, people from uh, North India, they are all studying here, applying for these courses. Why? There are no geographical boundaries. Even uh, people from other countries are joining this program. Okay? Because it has across the various of, uh, of learning platforms. You can have personalized learning and you can conduct assessments online. You can take a quick poll review. Based on the still based learning is possible. You, during the learning itself, the system will evaluate. What should be probably your work now? Picking up your PG 
and going forward what companies you should search for. The last one, social media. Social media is actually a very good topic. Uh, I will take uh, two minutes from there. So we have seen increased usage and engagement after the COVID time, um, especially on the video content. So I'm sure all of you are well versed with watching shots. Okay, started with TikTok, TikTok, and then more to Instagram, Reels. Now trending is YouTube, YouTube. Uh, e-commerce integration. Okay, you can directly buy. Uh, you see a you see a advertisement in Facebook. Go and click on that. Facebook end to end, they have brought in the platform to do the checkout process. They are not depending on now other service provider. They don't need a separate database to do this. They now put everything into one product. Okay. Um, virtual events are right now. What is I, I, I know this is also like the published YouTube. That's a nice example over here. Uh, unlike you, like there are many online people who are watching this program. Um, mental health awareness. Yeah. I am a victim of this, right? Because we keep watching your screen for uh, continuous like uh, So take care of your mental health. Okay. Um, authenticity related related to the same thing like uh, related to other things. Uh, use of uh, augmented reality AI, yeah. privacy security is a concern area. Still, uh, don't over it. Problems start when you uh, use it as a product, but when you start using it like uh, your life, okay, problem starts from there. Um, social activism, diverse content creation, yeah, that was the last topic. Uh, what does that mean? Diverse content creation. Uh, you, know, you are poor area. You can only excel in what you know. But if this diverse content creation, you can even talk about other areas. Okay. So the platform facilitates that. I think we are on the last right? Yeah, I can take a few questions before we find out. There are questions. So, what is the feature of uh, user experience? Yeah. User experience. User experience is more uh, on mobile platform and uh, what I am uh, about the, the focus is going away from touch to more using our voice and the ears. So uh, if, if, if there are people who are trained on yeah, creating UI, UI is designed as uh, it, it will be better, they also get to know some basic level of uh, I will work on IOS. Uh, the might be Otherwise, I think still uh, there is a huge room by the way for this. But you cannot get rid of it. You are even since you did it all the time. Any more questions? Thanks for taking up. One minute, one minute. Yeah, Mahid, you can ask him first. Watch what's saying, 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 Transformations. Before we conclude this insightful section, it's my pleasure to invite our honorary secretary of IIT for Dr. B. Zirilaj to extend our formal vote of thanks. Please join me with welcome, Dr. for forward of thanks.
area. Students, friends, mechanical links, chairman of the IELTS, UNC, that is Bangladesh. Excellent resource person, Mr. Ghanavan, sir. So, we did that. The maiden uh, technical program uh, after a uh, new uh, office parents have taken over the uh, IA interviews activities. So, thanks to all uh, my colleagues, friends who have initiated uh, to have uh, such a wonderful resource person because us uh, already said that these are the things that have been shown today. But uh, if you continue, the knowledge what he has uh, shown more today. If you practice, then probably when you become a professional, when you become a decision maker, you will be preferred than the rest of the people because you are trying to take uh, the technology along with you. So if you do not have the technology along with you, you have the other things attitude, but without that, you cannot win. So that's what actually happened here in the real war also. That is happening between Ukraine and then Russia, as well as uh, in the Middle East. Sir, one small country is uh, posing a challenge to the rest of nine countries uh, uh, the, uh, in India uh, are the territory. Yeah, so please, uh, dear uh, students, understand the importance of knowing the technology journey along with that. That's very important. I hope this system would have given you good insight on. Uh, these upcoming trends which are available here. Yeah. So take any few of them, then have a deep dive on them. So try to have some companies who are on the business and then how they're driving here. Yeah. So try to be a proxy employees of these organizations so that you can know what is happening here. So with this, um, uh, once again, it will be back uh, recommend sir for knowledge with the wonderful this today's meeting is actually for students we are in the stats, the big so take your stats and then leave the hall without any space. Thank you, thank you.